I've had a series here on this channel called PPP, Printed Photography Pickups, where I showed you all of the photo books, prints and zines that I recently picked up. But I realized that there's a little problem with that because I also pick up other photography related things regularly that don't quite fit the printed category such as new cameras or new interesting films or some sort of knickknacks or accessorize that I still would like to share with you which is why I decided to make the series a little bit more inclusive and rename it to recent photography pickups starting with this video. I haven't done this in a while so quite a lot of things piled up over time which will probably not fit in this video alone so I will probably have to make another episode very soon but for this episode here today I will share with you two new cameras that I picked up recently including one big surprise if you get the hint already and a couple of photo books, zines and prints that inspired me lately. Let's start with the first new camera I got, which is this one here. This is the Canon Prima Sol, also known as the, I think, Canon Shoreshot del Sol, which is a 35mm point-and-shoot camera that comes with a built-in solar panel to actually power the camera. When I was in Portugal earlier this year, I also visited a couple of flea markets and on one of those there was also a stand from a guy who was selling a bunch of 35mm film cameras. When I went to the table, um, this camera here immediately caught my attention because I haven't seen a camera with a built-in solar panel before and because this kind of reminded me of an old video game I used to play that was also powered uh, via a solar panel called Boktai for the Game Boy Advance in case anybody still remembers that. But yeah, I was very interested in this camera, but sadly the one that he had uh, there was not functioning anymore, it was broken, which is why I decided to not buy it. After being back in Germany, the curiosity for this camera didn't leave my sight, which is why I decided to see if I can maybe find one online. Turns out that these cameras are kind of hard to find, but after keeping my eyes open for a couple of weeks, I luckily found this one for 40 euros, including shipping. And to be honest, I'm still a little bit indecisive if this was a very good deal or if I was ripped off for a cheap plastic fantastic, so let me know what you think about this. So far I've only shot one roll of film in this camera and I have another one loaded in but I haven't developed the film yet so there's not much I can say about the image quality yet but so far this little camera has been a lot of fun to shoot with. It looks you know a little bit futuristic and a little bit funky but I really like it about that and I'm you know also looking forward to summer again so I can also make more use of the solar panel. And next I got three books by Jupa Grafica called Eastern Blocks, Monotowns and Concrete Siberia, which is a photo book series about brutalist and modernist architecture in the former Soviet countries. Jupa Grafica is an independent publisher run by David uh, Navarro and Martina Sobeczka, documenting the concrete landscapes of the former Eastern Blocks. And cities featured are for example Moscow or East Berlin, Warsaw, Budapest, Kiev or Novosibirsk and also many others. And this book series is actually kind of responsible for my recent growing interest in brutalist architecture and also what inspired me to go out and explore some brutalist buildings on one of my latest trips to Berlin, um, which you can also check out here on YouTube in the two videos I made about it in case you haven't watched that already. And these books are really beautifully made and I really love the balance between the very cleanly composed images you can find here and also the kind of informative point about the areas and districts that are kind of portrayed in this book. On the beginning of every chapter you will see kind of a small map of the district or the city that will be shown in the chapter and you can read up some information about it and later all of the images are also labeled with more detailed information as for example the name of the street or also the year the buildings were built. Currently I only own these three books by them um, which are all very unique and very beautiful in their own way because they focus on different areas. But if I'm not mistaken, Jupa Grafica also brought out two more books in the meantime. One that is called Soviet Playgrounds, which focuses on the playground areas in the former Eastern Blocks. 
and also one that is called the tenants where you get more insight into the people's life that are you know living in the areas uh, more portraits of people because in these books here you sometimes have a focus on the buildings themselves and sometimes you have people integrated so i'm very interested to get to know more you know personal stories of the people living in the eastern blocks of former soviet countries so of course at some point i will probably have to get these books as well and also regarding the current political situation where some of the places especially the ones in ukraine might not exist in the same way that they did when these books were published i think it's especially tragic but also in a way beautiful that we have photography as a tool that kind of gives us some sort of documentation of these places that will last forever, even though political situations kind of cause these places to change. And up next we have this zine here called Haystack Heroes that was kindly sent to me by Tommaso Carrara aka Getons or Jetons, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce the Instagram handle, but I decided to just read out the introduction to the scene because I think it can capture the essence of this work way better than I could with my own words. As a Londoner based amateur photographer who generally focuses on the urban life, I have recently started to appreciate the remoteness and tranquility some places can provide. For my very first post-pandemic holiday, I decided to visit the Orkney and I was amazed by the beautiful landscapes and the authenticity of their people. While visiting Westray, a small island at the far north of the archipelago, I stumbled upon a carefully dressed scarecrow, and another one, and one more, and so forth. Little did I know they had been created by families all across the isle with the aim to raise money for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. This is a collection of those I met on my way while traveling all over the island. So in summary, this is kind of a documentation of the scarecrows on this island during a rather narrow time frame. And I think that these kind of themes are very interesting for zines because they are somewhat enclosed and somewhat temporary, yet really important to be captured because otherwise the memories of such important events might get lost. And if you check out Tommaso's work over on Instagram, you might see that what he usually does is more like urban photography or more canned street photography. So I found it very inspirational to see somebody stepping out of their comfort zone and kind of taking over a project that happened by chance, even though it might not be 100% in line with what they usually do. So, you know, seeing people work with other themes and other subjects out of their comfort zone is something that also really inspired me recently. And the next thing I literally got ages ago, but just recently I also got a frame for it, which is why I wanted to share it on here too. And it's a print by photographer Jess Hobbs, whom you might also know because she has a YouTube channel where she's also sharing her analog adventures. And this image here was taken on a Dora Goodman a Scura 6x6 pinhole camera using some Ecta 100 film and an exposure time of over 15 minutes if I remember correctly and to get kind of this level of details out of a pinhole camera really requires some some really big skill which still impresses me to this day and this print also inspires me to go out and do more night photography myself. And last but not least we have the big surprise which is well a big camera. Ever since I shot 4x5 for the first time with my friend Heine in Rostock last year, I think it was, I was really intrigued and very interested in the idea of getting a 4x5 camera myself. And initially I actually wanted to get an Intrepid camera because this is kind of the most affordable step into the 4x5 ecosystem. But the release of the hardwood Intrepid cameras was postponed several times, which is why in the end I decided to look around and see if I could find some other options. So by total coincidence I stumbled upon this Chamonix N2 4x5 camera from a local photographer who's just living like one city from where I'm living um, who decided to give up on large format and sell this camera uh, in a kit with a bunch of lenses and accessories and also brought this camera to my city so that I could try it out before purchasing it which is just a really luxury situation to be in if you try to invest in a new system.
So the body is the Chamonix N2 body out of teak wood, which is a slightly older model than the ones that Chamonix has listed on their website now, which is the H1 and the F2, which have slightly more movements than the N2 has, but which is still modern enough for what I probably intend to do. Uh, and it also came with a bunch of lenses. So I have the 150mm Schneider Kreuznach f5.6, the Schneider Kreuznach Super Angulon 90mm f8, and the Schneider Kreuznach Telexenar 240mm f5.5, which all came with shutters and lens boards pretty much ready to use. The lenses are generally in beautiful condition, but some of the shutter speeds on the lenses, especially the longer shutter speeds, like one second or up, do not run as precisely and the shutter might get stuck from time to time. So in case you know any place within Europe that can take care of that, please let me know. And the body also came with the protection for the glass, also an additional Fresnel screen. And the kit also came with a Berlebach wooden tripod, which is really beautiful, very heavy, but also very sturdy, which means that I simply didn't have to get a lot of additional things to get started in 4x5. So all I had to add was a couple of Toyo film holders, uh, a magnifying glass, and the Mod 45 insert for my Patterson developing tank. And that's everything I needed to get started with large format photography. So the whole story is a little bit more complex than that because my N2 actually fell on the ground and broke before I could even use it for the first time. But that is a longer story, a story for itself that I will tell you in a future video. But all that matters for now is that it's good, it's working, it's healthy again, which also led to me taking it out for a spin for the first time. So it means I already shot my first couple of sheets of 4x5 film already, which was just such a lovely experience again. I'm very, very, very excited for this journey that is yet to come because I realized how much kind of this camera changes my photographic vision and how I use my tools in a way that I haven't experienced with any other system or with any other camera before. So I'm very, very excited with uh, yeah, the journey that is yet to come that I know will contain a couple of mistakes and fails, but that's kind of part of the learning curve. So I'm very pumped for this new system and I will of course also document my journey here on YouTube. So if you are interested in that, you should definitely stay tuned. So this is everything for this episode. Everything, and of course also everyone I mentioned in this video, will be linked in the description box down below. So please let me know which of these pickups you were the most surprised by, but also most interested in. And in case you've picked up something photography related recently that you felt inspired by, please feel free to share it in the comment section down below as well. And a little spoiler alert for the next episode of recent photography pickups. Apart from the two cameras that I mentioned in this video, I also picked up two other cameras that I will take some time to explore in my own pace. But if you want to take any guesses, you can definitely do so now because I will reveal it in a future episode. And that being said, I would say stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.